Hello, welcome back. Mr. Munyon here with Unit 5, Embedded Assessment 2, after Activity 35. This is just practice with surface area and volume of some 3D shapes, and you do have a couple questions on density at the end. So uh, here I have a blank uh, version of the Embedded Assessment. You can get this uh, from the Unit 5 PDFs at the very, uh, not the very end, I think it's on page 93 of there. Uh, but in the book here it says it's on page 523. Uh, it's on page 93 of the PDFs on Unit 5 though. Uh, so here it's practice with surface area and volume of these shapes. I'm not going to work these individually. I'm just going to uh, show you the steps uh, so you can check your own work on these. You should go ahead and try and find the surface area and volume of each one of these. Uh, I do want to point out that I did these calculations as if this cone and the cylinder were separate from each other for the head and the hat of this. So the hat was its own little piece and when I did surface area I used the base uh, of the cone and same thing for the uh, surface area of the cylinder. I used both bases on the cylinder as well for this. Okay, uh, give it your best shot and pause. I'll pause the video here and when I pick it back up I'll have the answers on this. All right, so here I have the answers. You can check your work. Probably scoot in just a little bit. If you want to screenshot this or pause it just to check uh, each of your steps here along the way, I'm going to scroll down so that we can see the other parts. I accidentally mixed up the head and the uh, hat. I did them backwards because the hat was on top. Let's look what else we got here. So there's all of the calculations. Once again, you can pause if you want to check something here. Uh, after we get all the surface area and volume, we do have some questions to ask um, if each action figure is going to be painted and it costs two cents per square centimeter of your paint, how much would it cost? Uh, if you got a different answer, maybe you forgot that uh, when you're painting this figure, there are two arms and two legs. You don't just add up the individual surface areas. You, add a, you have to add up both arms and both legs. So make sure you count those twice. You should get the total surface areas 14.85, and then uh, from there multiply it by two cents, and you get twenty-nine dollars and seventy cents to paint the whole thing. Same thing with uh, the cost to make it out of a 3D mold uh, for whatever material you're using that costs three cents per cubic centimeter. Make sure you count both arms and both legs again. Uh, so you should get a total volume with both arms and both legs, 1612 cubic centimeters. Multiply by three cents per cubic centimeter should be about $48 uh, to make the figure. On the next page, we did have uh, some questions that said the designer says the specification says the robot design is supposed to be uh, 1.34 kilograms. And then it says which one of these materials would create that. And I did these calculations and none of these would work. Uh, if, you, if you use polyurethane, you get, uh, well, it's too heavy, it's 1.5 kilograms. All of these are end up being a little bit too heavy. And obviously you can use the relationship here uh, to figure out uh, which one of these would have the, you know, you know the volume, you know the density, you can figure out the mass. That's all I did for these here. Um, so since none of these worked, I went ahead and just figured out, uh, given the volume of the robot, the total volume, and the mass that I want it to be, uh, 1.34 kilograms is 1,340 grams, I just figured out what the density was supposed to be. So I need to find a material that uh, is approximately this dense that obviously is a reasonable price to be able to make these. All right. Uh, hopefully you got tons of practice and you became more efficient with surface area and volume. Uh, although it may seem tedious, uh, what your goal on these is to make sure that uh, two things. One, you don't, you've you done enough of these that you know where you're going to make mistakes and you don't make those mistakes anymore. You're more careful. And two is to become more efficient with these. So the more you practice these, the more efficient. You'll remember the formulas faster. You don't have to look them up every time. You won't be wasting time on, you know, finding surface area or volume of a problem. You can spend more critical time on other questions or uh, more in-depth questions. I'll see you guys next time.